I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. Sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 259, How to Use the Filter Tray on a Canvas. This is in response to a question sent to me at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com by Marco. And Marco wants to be a Quantrix master. That's why Marco doesn't hesitate to answer, ask me questions. And I want to make Qu Marco a Quantrix master, so that is why I, ha I answer his questions. You see how that works? If you want to become a Quantrix master, go ahead ask me a question. It's free. I want to make you a Quantrix master, and I'll try to answer your question here on the podcast. How about that? All right, let's get to the example here. We have sales that we're forecasting. I have the sales matrix. I have it by product group, cycling, camping, hiking, actuals, and forecasts are my numbers. And then I have some sort of growth rate that I'm applying to the forecast, and I'm applying it in the yearly buckets as shown here, and corresponding year buckets are found here. If I were to go ahead and change cycling in year three to take, say 10%, I would expect to see these values and subsequent values for years uh, four and five to decrease, and I've done that. If I were to go ahead and make this simply 0%, again, these numbers are changing. If I wanted to uh, go ahead and change camping, make it 20%, I could go ahead and do that. Again, some basic Quantrix going on here. The question Marco has is, well, what if I don't want to show all of the growth rates uh, like this? Maybe I want to allow the user to simply filter on what growth rates are being exposed to them for the specific product lines. How do I do that? Well, what I would do is I would simply click on, I don't think, I think you can have it on interact mode here, but I would go ahead and open up my to, uh, format toolbox. You can do that by hitting the F3 key. And then I would go down to table view and I would unselect hide category tiles. Once that is completed, I would go ahead and head and take the category, which in this case is products, up to the filter tray that I want filtered. And then I would maybe click back in here and I would have the category, hide the category items once again. So for hiking, if I wanted just to see, just to change its rate, I could go ahead and simply uh, change that rate, maybe change it to 15%. Again, I see these numbers uh, fluctuate and increase. If I wanted to change year four, I could go ahead and increase that as well and see uh, the forecast change. For hiking, if I wanted to change it to a different department such as cycling, I can go ahead and I can change that. Go ahead and make that 50% and you can see that I've, uh, I've increased my values there in year three by 50% according to my logic and my underlying formulas. So this is how you filter using a canvas. Simply drag it up to the top here to the filter tray. Uh, you may also say, well, can I then filter this view? Of course you can. Again, it's the same way. Simply remove uh, the hide category check mark and go ahead and bring products up here to the top. And indeed, it will just show you uh, the category or the items for the category that you have selected here. So it works just like it would in any other view or matrix. So again, if I don't want to see those category tiles anymore, I would hide them and then I could toggle through these and make my changes in my forecast and see those changes kind of percolate throughout my model. That is how you use the filter tray on a canvas, Marco. If any of you have questions about Quantrix, I do hope that you'll reach out to me at quantrixauthority at gmail.com. I absolutely love Quantrix. I want to make you a Quantrix master. I also encourage you to go check out my quantrixauthority.com website and check out the uh, introductory training if you're new to Quantrix. I think this is maybe one of the best prices there is on the market for this type of offering where you really can get a thorough understanding of the fundamentals of Quantrix. I've received great feedback on this training and I'd, I would encourage those of you that are new to really go and check it out and I, I like to think that it will be of great benefit to you. And of course I hope that you'll join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority because I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Today's podcast is brought to you by QuantrixAuthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.